Welcome back to part two of our presentation on tissue management. Let's talk about the three chemical categories involved in hemostasis. They are the astringents, ferric sulfate, and epinephrine products. Let's start first with the astringents. Their mode of action is astringent action, or causing the muscular fibers surrounding the capillaries to constrict. These products would be aluminum chloride, aluminum sulfate, and zinc phenosulfonate. I want to point out that Pascal uses only aluminum sulfate in their products, and we'll talk about the advantages of aluminum sulfate further on in the presentation. You'll find aluminum sulfate in our gel cord, gel cord clear, our retrax liquid solution, our braided siltrax AS cord, and our twisted pass cord. Here we have a diagram of a capillary blood flow. Uh, you can see the red blood uh, the red blood cells, the white blood cells flowing through. We'll have an injury come here in a minute. You'll see uh, the application of aluminum sulfate and the astringent action occurring. The musculature around the capillary squeezing down, stopping the flow of blood so you can take an impression. Let's talk about a step-by-step -step using our gel cord 25% aluminum sulfate gel. This is the gel that you'll find in your sample kit. Step one, we cut the prep and bleeding occurs and we go ahead and draw a bead of gel of the aluminum sulfate gel cord around the sulcus. This will give you some initial retraction in the fact that aluminum sulfate is the only product that has the capability of relaxing collagen fiber. So we can call that initial retraction making it easier for us to pack our retraction cord. You can make a judgment call here at this minute. You can see if the bleeding is heavy, let the gel cord sit a minute or two before you begin packing. Or if the bleeding is light, you can go ahead and take your retraction cord and pack uh, immediately. And keep in mind that aluminum sulfate is compatible with any types of retraction cord, medicated or not. So we begin our cord placement. And a nice feature uh, of gel cord is that it's sticky. It holds the cord in place. This allows you to work hands-free, especially when you're packing on an upper. So we begin our packing. And another great feature of the gel is that it acts as a lubricant. So that cord it doesn't have to be forced into the sulcus. It can glide into the sulcus. You'll have less trauma, less bleeding, which is what we're after. We also use what is called the dual packing technique. We use the R55 instrument for our buckle cord packing. And here's a close-up of the R55. You can see it has a rounded serrated head that allows you to grip the retraction cord and roll it into the sulcus. Here's a close-up of that head and you'll find serrations on our R55 and our R55 off angle which we'll use for lingual packing and if you prefer a non-serrated packing instrument with a rounded head we do have the R55 or the R50 excuse me. So again now we're packing on the lingual side we switch to the R55A, making it much easier to pack that lingual side of the tooth. And here's a close-up of the R55A. You can see it does have the serrations and the circlet head. It's just at an off angle. Let's move on to ferric sulfate. The mode of action of ferric sulfate is a binding, binding or plugging action. But you'll notice the pH is quite low and I list the pHs of our competition, astringent by Ultranet at 1.2, Viscostat 1.2, and Viscostat Plus at 1.2, as compared to Stat Gel, the Pascal product, which is at 2.2. And we'll talk later about pH to explain the differences and why a higher pH is a better product to use than a product with a lower pH. Now rather than the astringent action, the way that these products work with our diagram here, so we apply the ferric sulfate, the iron in the ferric sulfate binds with the iron in the blood to form a plug. This is how the uh, ferric sulfate solutions or gels work. Let's take a look at an application of our stat gel, 15.5% ferric sulfate gel. We've cut the preparation, you can see the bleeding. And we apply the stat gel. And with stat gel, you'll get immediate hemostasis. It binds with, or the iron in the stat gel will bind with that iron in the blood, forming the plugs.
Now we have to be careful with ferric sulfate in that we have to rinse it away completely because it will interfere with impression materials. The gel cord that we talked about earlier has a unique advantage over aluminum chloride and ferric sulfate in that it won't interfere with impression materials. If you want to stop bleeding quickly, ferric sulfate may be for you. But in most cases, 25% aluminum sulfate cord, such as the gel cord, is more than enough medication to stop the bleeding. I recommend that you keep both. The ferric sulfate product, when you've got a heavy bleeding situation, the patient, the patient is on aspirin therapy, uh, whatever, blood thinner, you can't seem to stop the bleeding, that's when you use the ferric sulfate. But in 95, 98% of your cases, as I said earlier, aluminum sulfate is more than enough medication to control bleeding. As I mentioned before, ferric sulfate is very effective. It will control difficult bleeding. You can see in this pulpotomy, normally to control this type of bleeding uh, can take 30 to 60 minutes in some cases. When we applied gel cord, or excuse me, stat gel, because it is in a gel form, and we're able to hold that medication to that wound site, we were able to control this bleeding in 90 seconds. So it's very effective, but remember a lower pH and a little bit more technique sensitive. Here we have a gingivectomy. And again, we've got bleeding occurring. We apply stat gel, and normally we'd only use gel cord in this situation because we don't want the blackening of the tissue. But we're using this mainly for demonstration so you can see the binding of the ferric sulfate in the gel to the binding of the uh, iron in the blood. And you can see now rapid hemostasis and the restoration complete. Let's move on to epinephrine. The mode of action here is vasoconstriction. This is the fastest way to control bleeding. Uh, we have epinephrine in our Siltrax Epi products, our Siltrax Plus products, both braided cords, and in our twisted cord, uh, ray cord and ray cord 2. And again, we have our diagram here, uh, blood flow, and we'll have our injury come in. And rather than squeezing the muscular fiber around the capillary, the mode of action vasoconstriction, the muscular fiber inside of the capillary is going to squeeze. The side effect of epinephrine is the fact that doesn't only happen in the mouth, this does uh, carry through the entire uh, body system and you will have vasoconstriction not only in the mouth but throughout the body. So you can see here the constriction of the uh, muscular fiber inside of the capillary. This is a concern sometimes if you've got an elderly patient, a heart patient, if you use too much epinephrine, you're doing multiple preps, uh, you may have some heart palpitations or in some cases even some angina in the patient. Uh, the key here is to know your patient when you want to use epinephrine. In a, in a small amount, uh, we've never had a problem, but if you're packing uh, two, three, four uh, preparations with epinephrine, you need to be careful. Uh, but it is the fastest way to control bleeding. We'll stop there and we'll move on to section number three.